our 30th. Um, but it refers just to the one alternate driveway location. Right. right. But what, but what well, he it? says the center line of the driveway should be located. So he's telling us where he believes it should be, and that is at this point. I think um, that implicit in, in those words is his feeling that this driveway should be discontinued. Um, and we are attempting another solution. If that's not acceptable, then then we must, you know, seriously yeah. consider this. I, I think we have to be very careful mm -hmm. before we take your own expert's opinion and throw it out the window, that we have some real good sound safety reasons for doing that. Mr. Chairman. Are you going to Um, Mr. Chairman, I, when we did the site walk, I think we all had a problem with the use of the summer gate for an in and out movement of traffic. I think the problem was more an in, in, in movement of traffic than an out movement, and it generally seemed like as an exit, and respecting the nature of the road and the historical use of the property, that an exit was appropriate. And I think that's the way we discussed it in the field. We also went down and looked at the alternate proposed driveway location, and that ex uh, appeared to be acceptable for the members who are there and, and looking left and right and, and sight distances. Um, I think the general consensus was the desire to see the entrance put in a different location other than the summer gate. I think the applicant has come to us with a uh, proposal that ameliorates uh, the issue of an entrance into the summer gates as long as it's abided by, uh, both for short term and potentially long term. And there are alternate alternatives as well, and that is that there is an acceptable entrance off Old Ocean House Road uh, that uh, that might be used. I'm not troubled by a joint use of a uh, driveway. My own house has a joint use of a driveway, and it appears to work out pretty well. I have to plow it, but uh, the neighbors are happy that I plow it, and they uh, use it uh, without any, any problem. So I'm not unfamiliar with joint use. I think it can and does work. I think that you have to have the language that we've talked about. I think we should encourage, and even on this plan, if it's acceptable to the planning board, uh, approve the um, alternate proposed driveway and perhaps also approve the joint use of the driveway going in so that the applicant and those who buy the properties have the um, have the uh, whichever options they choose and perhaps both are acceptable to the town if the town votes on it. There was a question about how much that will be used and whether or not that summer gate will become an entrance, not necessarily by those who are buying the property now, but in the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and the planning boards of 1989 are long forgotten, um, and any restrictions. And maybe we can best handle that by putting on a condition in our approval that lets the town know, and others, and as well as the applicant and the potential buyers of the property, that there are conditions on that that are shown on the plan. Um, and maybe that uh, we make uh, that an exit only and, and refer to violations of traffic law under the state law um, for any entrance use. That would give future police departments the power, presumably, to enforce uh, as a part of the subdivision review process a uh, state law for entering a private road. But I think we also have to remember that these are private driveways, that they're proposed for use of uh, three homes. And we're not talking streets. We're not talking thoroughfares. We're not talking about heavy traffic. And, and I think we have to um, keep that in mind. Later on, I'll make a, a motion. I've, as, as, as individual planning board members have proposed issues, I've written down some of those, like the travel surface and um, things of that nature. So after everyone's spoken, perhaps I can make a motion that deals with the issues. We can see how that language stands, the tests of the planning board. Okay. Any other comments? Um, well, I'll be interesting to, interested to hear what your, what your uh, uh, suggested changes in the motion are, uh, Dick, because I think it's of, of anything in this plan, the, the traffic access is the most troublesome. 
Um, uh, I'm not particularly concerned. I'm concerned about the safety of the people who will be living there, but I'm also concerned about the safety of the people who are unfamiliar with <coughs> the old Ocean House Road, uh, Route 77 intersection, uh, who stream out to Crescent Beach State Park and Two Light mm -hmm. State Park and may not be aware that there is going to be a slowdown of traffic entering and exiting that, that location. Um, so, and I'm, I'm sure that the people who live in the subdivision will be careful about the way they enter and exit, uh, but it's people who are less familiar with the caution that needs to be exercised. And in that case, the overriding public welfare is more in, is, is it of importance to me and ought to be of importance to this board. Um, if, it, if, if the solution could be um, found through access uh, over Mr. Davis's driveway and it wasn't necessary to construct the additional road, I think that would be far better than, uh, than to build the road uh, because that is certainly more consistent with what the Robinsons have suggested. And uh, if there's any public benefit to what is being proposed here uh, in the absence of any Greenbelt connection, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to spend much time talking about that, it is the visual access that we will all have to that un, um, uninterrupted um, open, open space. Um, if the solution can't be found through that access road over Mr. Davis's property, uh, then I would have to support the alternative road as well, even though I would prefer not to. It, it's a complicated intersection. I've, I've driven that myself a couple of times, done the U-turn, and it doesn't take long, uh, it wouldn't take long for a couple of cars to back up behind a car turning left onto, uh, into that site before you had some real congestion in uh, a 40 to 50 mile an hour. Uh, section of Route 77. Turning left into this driveway? After you've, after you've turned left at Old Ocean House Road mm -hmm. and then made a U-turn around Made there. a U-turn come into the that's, summer gate. And that's why we propose no entrance here. I know, I know that yeah. that's what's being proposed. Whether that would actually occur or yeah. not is another question. Um, but that's, that's my concern about that. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> with respect to the uh, uh, green belt, um, and its connection. I, too, uh, uh, admire the judgment of, of Dr. Rand. Uh, if there's anybody in this town who is a proponent of the Green Belt, it's certainly uh, him. And uh, <coughs> I would support his conclusions about that. I'm disappointed in a way that, that uh, we may not be able to create an additional link because, uh, as I stated earlier, that is a very important goal of this community. Um, I think that the, uh, it's admirable that the Robinson, uh, Robinsons had the foresight they did in planning this originally and then thinking about the restrictions that they could impose which would preserve it. And uh, I think we're all very lucky to mm -hmm. have had people with that vision. Um, <clears throat> I won't say anything more about the green belt except to say I wish that we might have been able to uh, make some kind of a connection. Um, that's all I have to say. Okay. Are there any additional comments? Uh, my own opinion, uh, basically, on this is uh, echoes what a lot of the board members have said. I, I think that the, the property is a beautiful piece of property. Uh, the sidewalk certainly uh, enhanced my view of the uh, development. I think it has been uh, protected through the deed restrictions in a, in a, in a very forward-looking way. Um, I echo what Joel said. I certainly would uh, have liked to have seen some kind of a completion for the green belt. Um, it doesn't look like it's possible, and there is none forthcoming. So I, I don't really think that we can say much more about it. I am I am troubled though by that entrance. Uh, the safety aspect of it uh, bothers me immensely. I have been uh, vocal in the past on site view issues, especially related to short road developments. And, uh, and frankly, that, that, entrance, uh, that entrance does bother me. Uh, I think people that use the area continuously, like the homeowners, will probably get used to the traffic pattern and won't have any problem. But the visitors to that uh, site may not have that benefit. And uh, a turn on into that entrance with the kind of traffic we now see on Route 77 could be disastrous. 
So I'm troubled by, frankly, I'm troubled by that entrance. Uh, Mr. Entrance. Chairman, that is the summer gate that you're talking about? Yes. Entrance, yes. I am troubled by that entrance quite a bit. Um, is, is there any precedent for, excuse me, for putting a condition of, of certain use or style of entrance on a, on a development and, uh, you know, you just, you need to condition this use and then uh, I, what would you do if there were, if there were a problem? Well, it's difficult. It's difficult to uh, to enforce. Number one, yeah. and uh, you, you, you try to follow the rules of logic and what people will actually do. And uh, somebody sees a, a driveway, they're going to go into yeah. it, and even though there's we, traffic out across it. I've seen enough crazy down. drivers to know they'll do anything that uh, there's a road to go to. They'll go to it. We had a similar situation, by the way. Um, pardon? We had a similar situation in a business zone. Um, just just here off 77 going into Scott Tire, where there was just no way you could get into that driveway. We had a very similar situation with an island, and we had a condition the way that property was entered totally had to be off a different different location. Same exact issue as this one here, because it was just not practical or safe to use that property any other way. That was a business use, much more traffic. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, this is so, one. This is different. Mr. Chairman, that, that's, that's why I think the idea, the original idea that was put out in terms of having the alternate driveway on Old Ocean House Road, although not ideal, would, at least in terms of a logical viewpoint, would draw more people not to use the summer gate in that they would see, as they were trying to make that strange turn, it might be more obvious and visible that there was another driveway just a little bit down the road versus perhaps trying to make a strange turn and then seeing the exit only sign and having to go in and see and hopefully having a, a relatively good sized sign saying this is the entrance back to that lot. That's, I, that's why when I first saw the, the subdivision plan with the second entrance on Old Ocean House Road, I thought that was the solution. That's a way to preserve the use of the summer gate as an exit while still allowing but um, still allowing some access in. I mean, I think originally I was thinking that the summer gate would be closed altogether. And that's totally unacceptable. I think a compromise solution could be found. Um, but I think it has to make sense to all people who would possibly use, want access to lot three in terms of where the entrance is. So, excuse Steve, you think that this being entrance and using this as an exit, um, is significantly different than using this as an entrance and this as an exit because from yes. this point you can see this point. Yes, I think it would be much more obvious. They're very much, much Okay, I just wanted to understand that mind. because it seems that, you know, you're, you're still creating that matter of trust that this will be an exit only. From my professional opinion, the summer gate would not be used at all, but uh, I'm trying to find some compromise. I, I just don't, I think you know, even as an exit, it's less than desirable. It, it could work, but it's mm -hmm. not great. Um, I guess I'm a little disturbed that your traffic engineers, you know, materials aren't there to really justify or support some use of yeah. it. But that's yeah. you know, that supports decision. I, yeah. as a, as a town planner, I feel very uncomfortable with any use of the summer gate, and I would feel most comfortable with the use if it was exit only and there was the alternate driveway constructed at the at this time at this point in time as part of the original subdivision. Okay. Um, at this point, could we just review? Since we, I must remind the board here just that this that we are actually voting on final subdivision approval here tonight. This, there won't be any um, hearings or be any additional meetings or anything like this. It may be worthwhile to go through our list and make sure that what we have here is complete. We've already talked about some deficiencies, but uh, we'll have to address those. Um, Mr. Butler, could you go through the, the list of items? Okay, as, as sure. The issue came up in terms of the um, most of, most of the items on the first page are, are sufficient, and adequate. The issue came up in terms of the, the subdivision plan that was submitted and its uh, applicability to the town standards respecting a final survey plan. And I mentioned this to, to Sarah, and she said, well, she was anticipating that, that would be presented after, after, afterwards for signing. Um, but what's here 
doesn't appear to meet all the standards of the town with respect to a final survey plan with the final information. I have the Mylar with me tonight, which has the surveyor's seal. Okay. Is that the only thing that you're missing from, from what it, you say, was Steve? Was it the seal or, or seal, or was there additional information missing? I think it's the seal plus any other. This is usually something that we have Bob Hunter look at just to ensure that everything's there. I mean, the seal is an obvious one. Um, we want to make sure that what's that the final survey plan corresponds relatively closely to what's been proposed yeah. during the review process. Um, and any other lot line data that the town engineer feels. Yeah, the, Tim Brown of BH2M did look over the, the plan uh, last week um, uh, to make sure that when he put his signature on it, it was 100% accurate and complete. And he did find um, one number that we had written a nine instead of a six or something like that along one of these lines. And he, and he corrected that. And so it is now, in his professional view, accurate and complete. And he has signed it. But we have not had the benefit of our town engineers review of those plans, is that right? right? Correct. Okay. In terms of 9B, depiction of surface drainage patterns, this is a minor point. Um, usually, we like to see the direction, which include a little arrow here or there. It's minor, but it's there, so it put a partial there. Um, the state, uh, statement of technical and financial capacity there is no statement of technical capacity, and I am unable to find um, a letter from the bank that, again, uh, is supposed to have been submitted to the town that would talk about the applicant's financial capacity. Yeah. So that's, I don't, we don't have information on either side. That letter of financial capacity was delivered on December 2nd by Bob Davis to um, uh, Ernie, uh, in person, I was there and I saw it, and Ernie took receipt of that, and then, um, or no, it was the lady who, who took receipt, and we got a written receipt for that. And um, I have with me copies tonight of the statement of technical capacity. Which financial institution? Which, Which bank? People's Heritage. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll look and see if we can find that. Okay. I think we've covered all the checklist. Then the final done. item is the copy of any. There it is. There it is. Found it. Thank you. Financial capacity is there. Technical capacity, I think, is. Uh, <laughs> is uh, what is the technical capacity for to divide the show? piece of land into three it's pieces? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the final item is copy of any covenants or deed restrictions. And that's something where even in terms of the um, limitations on the land, we have a proposed deed restriction, not the right. final document. And then in terms of the use of the driveway, we don't have a, a covenant or deed restriction. And so those are other materials that also are, I put a partial there. We know at least what the um, deed restriction seems to be saying in terms of access to the site and use of the site in the future. Uh, we haven't seen the final documentation, which is usually done during a subdivision. So. Okay. Uh, so it sounds like we are lacking some items. I mean, um, just that last section about the, the deed restrictions and maintenance agreements. Yeah, and I think we would like to see a traffic engineer's uh, data report on that uh, that entrance. If you're still proposing that use of the entrance the way you are. We would like to see that report. We have, the, any information, are you saying that in terms of information from Bill Bray regarding right. the summer game? Right. For use as an exit? The Didn't issues it? around that gate, whether it's used as an exit or an entrance. It's going to be used as an exit, the way I understand it. Excuse me? No, he, he doesn't have um, anything other than sight distances looking down Old Ocean House Road, which he said were adequate for turning, um, turning right. Um, I could get that in writing for you. Um, mm -hmm. I think that I, I that's what we're looking for. Uh, that's a condition of approval. We can, we can get that. And then, then there was a the survey information. I just, you didn't mention that before. I wanted to make sure. Yeah. The, uh,
um, on the Mylar, we have a box now which says, I certify that our survey work conforms to the main board of registration for land survey or standard boundary survey with the following exceptions. One, no written report. Um, we, we will be writing, of course, uh, meets and bounds descriptions for the uh, uh, sale of these lots. Um, the, two, the perimeter survey was done by Owen Haskell. That was the, the data which we were working off of to start with. And three, the interior lot lines were calculated by BH2M. So um, this is signed and sealed. Does that meet the requirement? Sealed drawing. Sealed drawing. Submitted tonight. Yes. Mr. Mr. Chairman, um, it appears that there is um, consensus on this board uh, in support of uh, the minor subdivision. Um, however, one of the reasons why many of us are <coughs> uh, supportive of it is because of the restrictions that have been imposed by the family and uh, by the Robinson family on the purchaser, as well as those restrictions which the applicant himself uh, is proposing. Um, for, sub for other uh, purchases of the lot. And those documents, in my judgment, are incomplete uh, and not formal. Uh, at least I don't have or we don't have um, copies of completed and fully executed documents. And <coughs> I'm, not, I'm not questioning the <laughs> integrity of the applicant at all, but uh, I think that uh, we ought to be uh, diligent in uh, requiring that those documents be uh, formalized before we approve uh, a subdivision because they represent such a significant part of the reason why at least some of us are, um, would vote to support the subdivision. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a proposed deed restriction dated uh, 123088, and I don't know that that has been formalized any further. And, uh, uh, it might be beneficial to see the restrictions which the Robinson brothers have imposed themselves on the pr new purchaser. If I may, my name is Bob Davis, and those proposed deed restrictions come from Joe Pierce of the firm Pierce Atwood. Mm -hmm. They represent the family, and those are what uh, the family has given to us, and we're going to abide by all of them. There's some minor uh, words that my lawyer would like to, if anything, make those deed restrictions stronger for the continued protection of the land and their only uh, minor legal technicalities and the whole uh, spirit of those deeds is going to be carried forward. And there will be, <coughs> any changes will be a, a, in a minor form. Well, yeah, but to, to the point that Joel is raising, have we in our possession, those deed restrictions and those modifications. The lawyers are still going back and forth with the uh, uh, with the final drafts, and certainly we'll make the final drafts available to you. The changes will be minor, if any. Mm -hmm. Would would it be more prudent for us to? Well, I suppose we could go one of two ways. We could either approve the subdivision, if we were so inclined tonight, with the condition that it be subject to Corporation Council's review of, of the documents to make sure they satisfy the spirit of, of our vote, <laughs> uh, or postpone any final decision until we had received the formal documents. Mr. Chair, I don't know what our choices are. We have a lot of um, a lot of what we do as a planning board has to be based on the facts presented uh, during the application process. And there have been a number of pieces of correspondence that talk about the proposed restrictions, and certainly no uh, changes can occur to the facts presented without uh, opening up the whole issue of, of planning board review once again. Uh, and I hear what Joel is saying, and I hope the board would uh, would uh, take the approval process to culmination uh, and perhaps having a subject to uh, listing however that language might be drafted at the end. And I haven't done that one yet, um, but it may be an appropriate one to add on to the end. 
But I'm wondering if there are really deficiencies in an application that is a borderline application on its own uh, in terms of what is a subdivision. It's barely a subdivision with an owner buying a piece of land, splitting off two other pieces and selling it, and there's an existing third building which kicks it over into the subdivision uh, review process. And that's essentially what we have here with a huge estate being divided into essentially uh, two existing buildings and two new lots. And I personally, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit troubled that we are, 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 are spending as much time, and, and maybe it's just my perspective, but spending as much time looking for inconsistencies, looking for pieces of information that, that may or may not be important from a technical sense for subdivision review. And they may be, and that's for the planning board, that's for you to determine as planning board members. I guess the big, to me, technical issues were the driveway. And I personally think that's been resolved. I think we need to tighten it up with some real restrictions, but I think it's been resolved. We've looked at the project. I don't think we need Bill Bray to tell us that that's a tough intersection coming out into uh, for uh, a user of that lot three. Uh, it is, uh, but it's a lot different than what they originally proposed, and that was an entrance and an exit. I guess I would disagree about having an access close to the exit only as opposed to far away. I think when people are told where to enter this property and they're going to give, be given a map for a party or they're going to be users and friends of lot three, they're going to be told where to come in. They're not even going to be near the exit. Maybe the second or third or fifth time, maybe it's easier to come in the exit. I think that's what we have to avoid. But I think it's the continual users of the property that are going to tend to use the exit or would tend to use the exit rather than the entrance if they're coming from the area of Crescent Beach up Route 77, shooting up the exit rather than going up and around down the entrance. I don't think it'll be occasional users. They'll be told where to have the entrance. I'm not sure by having it closer that it makes it any better. Um, people, if they are really bent on, on doing something different, are going to do it no matter where the entrance is. I guess I'm prepared to make a motion. I don't see anything in the subdivision um, that should hold up or could hold up uh, the approval process. I think the survey is an issue. We have a sealed plan. I think there are some minor things that are uh, issues that if we had a uh, subdivision of uh, 20,000 square feet or 80,000 square feet with very precise lot lines, I think we should be concerned by many of the things that we're talking about. But we have a checklist, and I guess it's for us to determine whether or not we're bothered by partial information on a subdivision of this nature with 10 acre lots on it and uh, four lots of, uh, in 62 acres. So, Mr. Chairman, I guess I'm prepared to make a motion um, uh, and let it stand the test of uh, the vote and see whether it adequately uh, carries the concerns that we have into the conditions that we might impose. With that, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, if I may, one thing that's not in the suggested motions, um, and this should be done, is there should be two motions. One should be made to determine application completeness, and then the final plan of approval. Okay. We don't have that uh, uh, so nicely drafted for us this evening. Uh, Would you like me to sit? Try. Sure. Why don't you? Uh, I'll try this one. You can try this. You've got some section uh, yeah. sections that have to be uh, Which I will indicated. Look at. Be it ordered that the application of Robert and Kimberly Davis for Hidden Court, a proposed four-lot minor subdivision located off Ocean House Road, be found to have a be found to be complete according to section. Just a moment. 16-2-3A 
subsection A and the facts presented. Period. Didn't sound so tough, so moved. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? I second it. Any further, any discussion on the issue of completeness? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The application I, 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 is. Excuse me. I, want, I, I do want this to go forward, but let me just make a comment about my, my um, earlier remarks about the, uh, the easement documents. Um, my, my comments are not an effort to uh, stall uh, this application. I'm very supportive of it. Um, I think, however, that uh, we should hold this applicant to the same standard that we hold all applicants and uh, we have spent months uh, in, in past meetings uh, requiring uh, adherence to uh, all of the requirements of the subdivision, whether it's a minor or a major subdivision. Uh, I, think these, I think the technical documents uh, that are referred to in the application are, are very important. Um, they really are the documents that determine how this land is going to be used um, really in perpetuity, I suppose. You mean the, the legal That's right. documents? And uh, we haven't seen those documents. Uh, and I'm not questioning the representations of anybody uh, uh, in, in the, on the applicant's uh, uh, team. Um, but uh, it would be useful to see those documents. <laughs> and and uh, uh, I, I would not vote against the subdivision uh, tonight uh, just in order to get those, <coughs> those documents. But I would request uh, that they be made available to us uh, or to our town council, corporation council, and that they re be reviewed. I don't even know that it has to be a condition of the approval, but uh, I do think that we ought to uh, see them just to satisfy ourselves that um, they're there. And I'm not, again, I'm not, I'm not questioning you. Do you have I a just, time frame with these things? Well, uh, aren't the documents from the, uh, the, uh, the restrictions that the Robinsons imposed already in place? Yes. Okay. Pardon me? Uh, okay. <laughs> That's not the draft. In draft form. Okay. Well, things may be ordered differently, A, B, C instead of A, C, D, but the the substantial <coughs> intent will be identical. Okay. I'll vote to support the completeness <laughs> motion. <laughs> the uh, motion uh, for completeness passes. The application is deemed complete. I will now entertain a motion on the. Yes. Oh, we voted. Yeah, we voted. Yes. No, we voted. <coughs> um, I will now entertain a motion on the application itself, Mr. Chairman. I would move that uh, we order that the request of Robert and Kimberly Davis for final subdivision approval for Hidden Court, a proposed four-lot minor subdivision located off Ocean Offs Road, be granted according to 16.23 of the subdivision ordinance and the facts presented subject to the following conditions. A. That the existing summer gate is approved only for the purposes of exiting lot three. Violations to, the condition, to this condition would be treated as traffic violations under state law enforceable by local and state public safety officers. B, that acceptable language be drafted and approved by the town attorney for the owners of lot three to have the right of travel over the proposed entrance. C, that driveways are required to have a travel surface including shoulders of 18 feet and that driveways be maintained to an acceptable level for public safety vehicle use. D, that the alternate proposed driveway is approved for the location shown for future construction. And E, that final deed restrictions agreed to by the applicants be approved by the town attorney for consistency with the application and the vote of the planning board. I second it enthusiastically. 
Any discussion on this very complete motion? <laughs> Didn't mean to prejudice in any way. No discussion? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's just a question. <laughs> Does your motion, Dick, um, <clears throat> require that the alternate road from Old Ocean House, the alternate driveway from Old Ocean House, be constructed if access across lot one. or through uh, lot one uh, is discontinued? Yes. Okay. So that's your proposal. Yes. That was your original proposal yes, anyway. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion on this motion? Hearing none, I would call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes unanimously four votes to zero. The application is passed. Thank you. And we can adjourn a little bit late. And is there a representative uh, from Elizabeth Farm here? Mr. Chairman, do we still have the rule for 10 o'clock? Yes. Okay. I would move we suspend our rules to take an item up after 10 o'clock. Second. Second. Okay. Let's just, we go for a vote. All those in favor? <laughs> All right. Okay. We are suspending our rules. Is there a representative from Elizabeth Farms here? Okay, do they have to be here for this vote? Not for the Okay, all right. We have an item here in a um, letter from uh, uh, Michael McGovern on Elizabeth Farms letter of credit. And a request to reduce the letter of credit from 1300000 to 225000 Any, see, we had, we had a review of this by the town engineer. Yes, sure. the town yes. engineer and, and, and town manager both have reviewed this. And the, the amount, I don't believe, is a question. It's more the time period. Mm -hmm. And the original letter of credit um, was to extend through March of this year. And the applicant is asking that it, um, well, agree to uh, ask for an extension uh, the, through December 31st, 1989. And so it's really just the extension uh, of, so the, of the letter of the credit that's at issue now, not so much the amount. Not the amount. Okay. Any questions? Basically, it's an extension. Okay. Not an amount change. Do I hear a motion? No. Yep. Mr. Chairman, be it ordered that the request by R Rick Weincheck and Company for an extension of the letter of credit for March 31st, 1989 to December 31st, 1989, for Elizabeth Farms Coal Field, an approved subdivision located off Sawyer Road, be granted according to section 16-2-4C7A of the subdivision ordinance and the facts presented. Sure, second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, nay, passes. At this time, I would obtain a motion to adjourn. So uh, moved. Oh, we got an oath from our planner. <laughs> to, to, uh, two items. One is we need to sign the uh, Hidden Court subdivision. We, you need to sign the Hidden Court subdivision plan. And secondly, um, just want to see if everybody's comfortable with the rules and regulations and if you feel that adoption is desired desirable or required or what have you. It's not required, but if you'd like to officially adopt those, you can. If not, then we just need to sign this. Mr. Chairman, the, I, it used to be that the rules and regulations were adopted officially by the board every first meeting. It was one of the first items of order uh, for the new chair, mm -hmm. I think. And we might uh, do it at that time. You um, you're talking about the first meeting of the year? Yes. Of the year. Okay, so that would be March 1st, really? Yes. 
Do we table that item until March 1st? So moved. Or actually to our March meeting, not March 1st. Second? Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. All we got to do now is sign then. Oh.